Welcome back Silver Bull fans, welcome back to Silver Bull channel. Um, this is an amazing report that comes from the European Union Times, the EU Times online newspaper. This is Russia stunned after Japanese plan to evacuate 40 million revealed. If you don't know, Russia after the end of World War II occupied the Kuril Islands, um, which is about 1,300 kilometres of uh, islands north of uh, Hokkaido keeps going up to the Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia and there's about 56 islands there pretty much uninhabited um, very winter-like conditions but um, you know it's empty land and um, <clears throat> this is the, the shocking part now some of us have been saying this Fukushima disaster was as worse, if not more worse, than Chernobyl. And when you consider what they evacuated around Chernobyl, they haven't done nearly the same. I was talking about before t turning the whole of the Fukushima prefecture, which is a large area, into a um, national park because no human would be able to go in there. But <laughs> if this report's uh, true, it's even worse than that. It's talking about here... Uh, they reopened talks about the Kuril Islands and um, stunned the Russia, Russian diplomats, telling them that upwards 40 million of their people were in extreme danger of life-threatening radiation poisoning and could very well likely be faced with forced evacuations away from their country's most eastern cities, including the world's largest one, Tokyo. Now, Tokyo's it is just a massive city. Tokyo, Yokohama, it just takes in the whole of Tokyo Bay. Um, <coughs> just get on Google Maps, have a look, you'll see how massive the city is. Um, think of New York or London or anything like that, or Mexico City, any of those big cities, <laughs> just thinking about picking all those people up and moving them. Um, about 20 million people, I think, in uh, Tokyo, Yokohama. Um, not nearly the population of Australia and moving that whole population. I mean, just unbelievable. Um, so Japan's pretty keen to get the Kuril Islands back to have some place to ship these people. Um, if they did it, it'd be the largest migration since the 1930s when uh, Stalin forced tens of millions of people to uh, resettle in Russia's far eastern regions. A lot of people don't know about Stalin, the communist dictator, is that he killed far more people than Adolf Hitler. Yes, Adolf Hitler was an evil scumbag, but um, Stalin uh, made him look like an amateur. Stalin probably killed about three to four times more people than uh, Hitler. Um, he signed something like 40,000 death warrants himself. How the guy didn't get RSI, I don't know. Um, just shocking. Um... So the Japanese diplomats told their Russian counterparts that they were seriously considering an offer by China to relocate tens of millions of their citizens to the Chinese mainland to inhabit what are called the ghost cities, built for reasons still unknown and described in part as the ghost towns of China. Um, I know uh, Stalin Concept and others have talked about these cities that they've just built, built, built. Um, I presume of the view that the, the peasants in the country are going to be urbanised and that they'd have to have some place to pit them. Um, whether that urbanisation hasn't happened or not, I don't know. But there, there's uh, huge numbers of empty homes. Some pit it up to uh, 64 million people. Now, whereas the Chinese and Japanese have a very bloody history, they've fought over Korea... Uh, for much of their history, and, um, you know, there was the rape of Nanking where the Japanese just killed off um, millions of people. I think it was about three million Chinese. So that's a big call from the Chinese to offer that because there is that hatred there. But I think the Chinese recognise that the uh, Japanese, as a people, are pretty much hard workers. Uh, they're dependable and uh, they're loyal um, and uh, 
were they to be transplanted like that, um, like for the rest of the world, it would be very hard for us to put a, a Japanese and a, a Chinese next to each other and say, pick which one's which. Uh, most Europeans just couldn't do it. Most Caucasians couldn't do it. I know the Asians are going to be insulted. They say, oh, there's no comparison. They're very different. Um, I think uh, Japanese tend to have high cheekbones. Um, uh, be the, the palest, if I can put it that way, of the Asians. Not that the skin colour matters. It's just the way I'm trying to differentiate these people from uh, their neighbours. But essentially, they're, they're, they are from the same... Uh, group um, the Japanese would have originally come from China from that Asiatic people so um, they are related even if it was thousands of years ago um, yeah uh, the other advantage China would get of um, taking on all these Japanese citizens is they get the technology these people possess Japan's uh, probably one of the most technologically advanced societies in the world and it, it would be uh, bringing in uh, huge numbers of experts and um, I think the US would oppose that sort of mass movement of Japanese people over to uh, China. They would prefer to say, hey, we'll split some between the US. You know, the US might take in a... Uh, Five million or so um, that would kind of sort out their housing crisis pretty quickly taking on that number of people um, I would think uh, taking on Japanese people who uh, have been known to be fanatically hard workers um, uh, but, but highly educated um, they wouldn't necessarily conflict with the current Latino illegal immigration into America um, because most of you Latino immigrants tend to be uh, taking the low paying jobs and poorly educated whereas the Japanese are highly educated and um, a lot of them speak English um, they learn it at school and um, a hell of a lot of Japanese speak English so it would be easier for them to assimilate um, into an American culture than it would be uh, for, for Latinos um, who, who, on the whole, in America seem to still want to speak Hispanic, um, you know, Mexican and Spanish, um, and uh, are more, more about taking the country over. I think the Japanese would be, uh, certainly you think of someone like Robert Kawasaki, he's Japanese-American, but he's very proud to be American and very assimilated. Um, and... Uh, pretty clean to mix the blood if, if I can put it that way um, and they would be assimilated um, into America even in Australia here yeah, Australia is probably another nation we could take on um, a, a, a large uh, proportion but we'd have to settle them in cities other than Brisbane Sydney Melbourne Adelaide, these cities are already under pressure. Um, the, if you were to take millions of Japanese immigrants, you'd have to settle them in places like Darwin, Cairns, and um, maybe even create a few uh, new cities on the uh, uh, west coast of uh, Western Australia to accommodate them. Um, it would be difficult, but it could be a boon for Australia's economy. Um, but you know, um, I, I, I don't think America would just sit by and uh, see uh, China suck up a vast proportion of Japan because that that would just give them the jump in technology that they need to be a superpower on an equal footing with the US. Um, as they say here, foreign uh, ministry experts... Uh, Note that should Japan accept China's offer, the combined power of these two Asian peoples would make them the largest superpower in human history with an economy larger than that of the United States and European Union combined and able to field a combined military force of over 200 million people. Um, I don't think they could 
uh, have a military force quite that large, you've still got to feed and uh, equip that. Um, in today's sense, a military force that large is useless when you uh, think of things like nu nuclear weapons and um, and uh, just the, the firepower now available to nations like the US, like Saddam Hussein had a huge army, he had over a million in his army, but I mean, it just proved futile and useless against overwhelming firepower. Um, uh, I don't know, I don't know whether, how credible that article is. The disaster at the Fukushima nuclear plant may ultimately turn into a vendor capable of extinguishing all life on Earth. I know the Bible does say that um, God eventually has to come, the second coming has to come, Jesus has to come again, because um, if he doesn't, all life on earth will die. Um, God's grace is such that he wants to save as many people as possible, but ultimately at the end, um, he has to come uh, to stop humanity killing itself off. And, uh, you know, that's that's in Bible prophecies. In Revelation, it talks about one-third of the world um, and one-third of the people ending up dead. Um, there's all these uh, plagues that are laid out on the earth and uh, quite a terrifying read, actually, when you read it all. Um, and uh, for uh, atheists out there... Um, I think you'll find it a very difficult time to be an atheist when uh, these kind of plagues hit the earth um, because it'll be just uh, something that uh, people without a uh, spiritual basis or root will have a very hard time struggling with and uh, particularly when there will be uh, lots of supernatural events going on um, both good and bad um, anyhow Back to Fukushima, um, I, you know, I don't know how reliable this article is, um, I do know that uh, a lot of what we've been told about Fukushima has just not been really, you know, they never told the truth from the start, um, they said, oh yeah, it's a low grade uh, nuclear disaster, only only months into the thing did they finally say, oh yeah, it's a Category 7, it's on the same level as Chernobyl. Um, so, you know, and when you hear of other people on YouTube picking up radioactive particles in the west of the United States, so it's travelled all the way across the Pacific, that's a, that's a huge whack. What are some things I'm doing? I don't eat tuna anymore at the moment. Um, uh, because tuna is a uh, high level uh, predator and therefore if you've got low amount, even if it's low amounts of radiation in the North Pacific um, it's going to concentrate high, higher up in the food chain so you should avoid eating um, predators higher up in the food chain particularly those that travel a lot Tuna travels thousands of uh, kilometres. If you can be sure that your fish is staying locally, like it's coming from the Southern Pacific, then I think probably you're still safe to um, eat fish from the South Pacific, but I certainly wouldn't be wanting to eat fish, predator fish from the North Pacific. I think you'd just be giving yourself a, a unnecessary dose of uh, hot particles. But that's just me. I'm not a scientist, all right? So... Um, Everyone makes their own decisions in regards to things like this. Um, I wouldn't be eating any Japanese products at all. Um, and, uh, you know, even in the States where they were having problems with the milk and stuff like that, I'd be resident to uh, be... Uh, I'd be a bit more careful about what I was consuming. I'd be trying to get stuff that's sourced from as far east in the United States as possible. Um, you know, stuff grown in Pennsylvania or something like that, rather than stuff grown in California. Alright, that's uh, my Fukushima What is the Truth video. 
and uh, I'll leave it there.